is Super Ty. I'm joined with Comic Book Brando. He's back from vacation. Hooray! Yeah! And you had a great time, and now you're sunburned. A little bit sunburned. Yeah. Uh, we're going to talk to you about all the cool comics that are coming out this week. Uh, that is the 22nd. Correct. Yeah, sorry. The day you just told me. Yeah, I know. Oops. Uh, it's been a long day. Uh, and also, uh, we have some really cool announcements at the end of this as well. As usual, if you have any questions, you know, just leave a little thing in the comments and we'll answer it as quickly as possible. It's going to be pretty fun. I also totally forgot to announce on my Facebook feed that we were doing this, but that's okay. Uh, I'm going to start... Sorry, Ty's immediate family. Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> Uh, my first one is this new series from Image called Cold Spots. It's by Cullen Bunn and Mark Torres. Uh, have you ever been in a room? It's kind of creepy and it gets like a little cold, a little chilly. Sure. It's because there's ghosts. And that's what this is about. Like the little spots where there's, you know, where you're just kind of feeling unsettled. Well, that's because there's ghosts all around you. Uh, the main plot of the story is this guy is trying to find a, a rich person's daughter and granddaughter who may have been kidnapped by the ghosts. Ooh, yeah. Ghost uh, napping. Ghost napping, exactly. Uh, really cool. I enjoy this very much. Uh, I like Colin Bunn, but I think he does best when he does horror books, and that's what this is. I really dug it. Angelique says, hey, y'all. Hey. Hello. Starting off with the second issue of Die, Die, Die. Man, this book is crazy. This <laughs> is a violent, bloody, um, madcap murder spree. Um, by Robert Kirkman, Chris Burnham. Uh, the first issue was a surprise. We didn't know it was coming out. No one knew it was coming yeah. out. Um, knocked my socks off, so I was really excited about the second issue. And the second issue does not let go. We're finding out about uh, three brothers, and then there's also like some kind of strange underworld auction happening, and a lot of people are gonna die. So, pretty great, very cool made me gasp <laughs> yeah there was one part that you showed me pretty mm. appalled fantastic stuff yeah my next one is black hammer age of doom number four so this one you're starting to get answers uh the entire series has been, been built about this you know mystery of why these golden age superheroes are kind of just stuck on this farm and you don't know why well now you're actually getting answers of where they actually are uh, I was kind of surprised. I was not expecting what, you know, was actually happening there. So I'm pretty, pretty still intrigued with this because there's two more issues, I believe, to this. So whew, let's find out. Right on. I was not expecting this. It's such a good series. Oh, yeah. Get Lemire, man. Amazing Spider-Man number four. So uh, Kurt Connors has created a way to separate Spider-Man and Peter Parker. Mm -hmm. Now, that sounds like a great thing. Peter can just live his life without worrying about endangering his loved ones. Spidey can go off and be a beloved hero. The problem is, is Peter Parker really Peter Parker without his science and knowledge? And is Spider-Man really Spider-Man without his sense of responsibility? Hmm. See, the personalities were split too. And that is going to mean uh, a little bit of trouble when, uh, well, you see the Tri-Sentinel still there. So we've got some more Tri-Sentinel problems. And who's behind those problems? Mm. Find out. I actually have the issues where the Tri Sentinel first showed up. Cosmic Spidey stuff. Classic. My next one is Redneck number 14. So, last issue kind of had a big surprise at the end of it. And this issue, as you can tell, ramifications of that big surprise. Uh, but they came to our hometown, Austin. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah, so like they're actually in Austin now. They're in the city. They're in the city, and uh, there's this parliament of vampires, and one of the ladies in that parliament of vampires, or elders as they call themselves, uh, runs Austin, and she is not happy that the Bartlett boys are there. Uh, I really dig this series. Donnie writes a really great, sad, gruesome, angry vampire book with it, and there's like enough differences to make it like an intriguing vampire story, because you know, I've for a long time, I felt there wasn't any new kind of vampire stories out there. So, this one's actually really great. So, does the Parliament meet in that building that uh, you showed me? Do they? Man, I always knew there was something up in that building. Yeah. Since they put it up. When you see it, you'll know exactly what we're talking about. If you're in Austin. If you're in Austin. Otherwise, you'll have no idea what yeah, we're talking exactly. about. Yeah, exactly. Justice League Dark Number 2. So Wonder Woman's mystic Justice League team is out to stop these crazy, creepy beings that are 
Um, I don't try to give away too much of the mystery, but they're agents of the chaos that this team is fighting against. Uh, magic might not necessarily be helping the situation, so we'll see what this team can do uh, without relying on it heavily. Mm. But you've got Swamp Thing, Man Bad, Zatanna, Detective Chimp with Night Master's sword, and of course, the Princess of Power herself, Wonder Woman. Pretty awesome team. You get to see a side of Wonder Woman that you don't normally see. Some of her uh, dealings with uh, Mystic in the past and why she's qualified to be leader of this team. Very cool stuff. Uh, I love the way that the book is put together. There are entire pages, panels that really evoke the strange and bizarre world of the occult. So I'll say that it's pretty cool and you should read it. Black Panther number three, uh, Ta-Nehisi Coates has been writing Black Panther for a couple years now, and the first, you know, story arc, the main story arc that he was doing was this giant political thriller, and this story arc is just totally different. It is all out in space. Wakanda, like, started a space empire 2,000 years ago. Don't know how, but they did. And maybe some answers lie in here, you know. Uh, there's also... A lot of spaceship battles, which I'm always a big fan of. Uh, Daniel Acuna does the artwork in it, and I love his art style. And he's really great for sci-fi, so making a sci-fi Black Panther book, spectacular. Right on. Shanghai Red, number three. The blood-drenched revenge tale uh, that uh, talks about Portland's becoming a city. It's gaining respectability off the backs of basically Shanghai slaves and uh, the people that are crushed under the boots of politicians. Red was uh, taken aboard a boat and had to live out three years as a man named Jack. Mm. Uh, now Jack slash Red is back for revenge and murder is happening all over the place in the name of that revenge. Plus a family reunion. Mm. Awesome, awesome book. Beautiful, intense, highly recommended. Uh, Michael says, hey guys, and Kevin says, finally caught you guys live, hoping to make my way to Austin this weekend. We'll definitely stop by. Please do, say hi to us. We're live. And we're, and we're friendly. We're real. We are real. <laughs> I was about to touch your arm again, but I don't want to mess with your sunburn. It's, it's really not that bad. Just looks, looks redder than it feels. Yeah. It uh, sucked on Saturday. Though. I bet so. When, when, like, I knew I was getting sunburned, I'm like, I'm just trying to hold my arms in any way. <laughs> in the middle of this football coliseum, and the dude next to me is like, what are you doing? I'm just trying not to burn more. Oh, man. Even out, you know? Yeah, yeah. Get the underside of the arms, which never at all oh, change yeah. color. Yeah, I totally, I totally get that. How do famous people get tan there? Spray. Uh, X-Men Red number six, is, or seven, I'm sorry. This is the end of the story arc for this... Uh, first story arc, Cassandra Nova, she's kind of inciting this worldwide hatred for mutants using nano sentinels. Uh, very action packed issue in this one because Teen Abomination, are you familiar with that character? I'm not. Uh, oh, you're yeah. Uh, <laughs> Teen Abomination was in uh, the Howling Commandos book from a couple of years ago. Well, he's also possessed, for lack of a better word, by Cassandra Nova and he's destroying Atlantis. And so, a huge fight happening there. Uh, it also ends with a very cool monologue by Jean Grey, which I thought was really good. I think this is the best X-Men book that is out there right now. I'm digging this. It's just a different kind of team, a different kind of mission. Uh, new ideas for an <laughs> X-Men team. Joshua says, The Punisher. Very excited. What's in store for Frank Castle? Oh. The Punisher. <laughs> hey, there you go. I was also excited to see what was in store for Frank Castle. What is in store for Frank Castle? Um, he is fighting a one-man war against Hydra. He's paying for his sins, sort of continued a little bit from when he was the war machine, mm -hmm. um, but he doesn't have the suit or armor anymore. Now he's just the Punisher, and he's still fighting Hydra every way he can. Yeah. Um, a lot of crazy things happen in this issue. He is definitely, it, it's taken a more uh, political bend to it, but it's good to see Punisher taking on like a bigger villain, a larger scale enemy. And he's going to fight an entire army that includes supervillains, multiple supervillains. So uh, I'm pretty jazzed about this. Uh, Rosenberg, I thought, created a very compelling first yeah. issue. So I really like Rosenberg. Yeah, yeah. Give this a read. It is, uh, it's different from the street crime Punisher, but uh, has a really good feel to it. So 
I'm curious to see how he takes on an entire uh, worldwide criminal organization. Yeah. As long as it's not Demon Hunter Punisher, I'm, <laughs> I'm usually pretty good. Angel Punisher. Yeah. I, uh, that was Franken awful. Punisher. Franken Punisher was rough, too. Didn't Reminder do that, though? Reminder did it because Reminder loves Frankenstein. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, it wasn't his first Frankenstein book, but, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. You can't... I just... I can't deal with killing a character, turning him into Frankenstein, and then making everything okay. I, I love almost everything Reminder does, but that one just fell flat for That's, me. That was a bridge too far. Yeah. What is that? A bridge too far? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, West Coast Avengers number one by Kelly Thompson and Stefano Caselli. I'm, I was not really sure what to think about this one. I like all the characters. I mean, Kid Omega, you got Kate Bishop Hawkeye, you got Hawkeye, you got Dead... Uh, I'm sorry. Gwynpool. Gwynpool. Sorry. Uh, we also got America and Kate's boyfriend, and I totally forget his name. Sorry. Uh, but I do know his powers. They have the, he has the ability to change his skin into anything. His name's Fuse. Hmm. Uh, so Kate is getting frustrated in Los Angeles, and she decides to make a super team. Uh, and there's a really great moment in here where she's trying out new heroes. If you liked Great Lakes Avengers at all, that's very much uh, in the vein of that. Uh, it was really fun. I, I'm digging this. I really like Kelly Thompson. I love Stefano, Stefano Caselli. He's the, he's the guy that did the artwork for Secret Warriors for such a long time. Uh, very cool, very fun, uh, very funny moments. If you like any of the Hawkeye books, you'll like this one as well. The Hawkeye books, Champions. Yeah. Um, the Order. Do you remember that one? Yeah, it's The Order. Smacks of that. Yeah. We haven't had a West Coast Avengers book since the early 90s. So yeah, exactly. Pretty so. awesome seeing them back on the, where I just was. Yeah. You were just there. I was just there. What? Should have hung up with the Hawkeyes. Detective Comics 987. So this is the final part of the storyline where they're facing off against uh, Karma. <laughs> it's like, what is the name of that uh, being? Uh, very cool. You got a whole new team of bat friends here, including Black Lightning. You've got, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Here, sorry. You're dinging. I was confused, I was thrown off. But uh, neat storyline wrapping up, but also setting up future storylines. So if you've been enjoying this one, I think we'll have like a cool sort of thread going on that might lead them all the way to Markovia, which if you're familiar with any of the Outsiders lore, that is a very important place in uh, Batman history. Yeah. And that uh, will set, a, uh, again, a global stage for a character we're used to seeing in a more centralized street area. Nice. Venom number five. So, as you can see by the cover, Venom discovers a new power. Oh. He can grow wings. That's uh, nice. Uh, I, Once again, I'm not usually a Venom fan just because, you know... Eh, it's never been my character really, but Donnie's really painting a really cool picture with this of, you know, expanding the lore and mythos of it, but, like, it's also a horror story. Like, you know, a, a Venom book should be a horror story because, you know, if you're covered in black gloop that has, like, eyes and teeth, like, that's a horror story. So, that's why I'm digging this. Uh, Miles Morales is in this issue as well. There's a very funny exchange between the two, or the three, if you would want to put it that way. Um, yeah, you know, it's good. Pick it up. Yeah, even though Venom might not be a favorite character of ours, you can easily tell it's a favorite character of Donnie's. Yeah. And he's going all out to the wall on this one. It is pretty cool. Avengers number six. So this is the big culmination. We've got crazy sentinels basically ready to wreck the world. Celestials. Celestials. Gosh, I do that every week. Uh, Celestials ready to wreck the world giant size Avengers holding, hoping to fight back against them. The world's infected. We found out we are the way we are, and Earth spawns metahumans because of a celestial infection. Crazy otherworldly ideas all brought on by Loki. Yeah. Causing trouble again. Back to his old shenanigans. Uh, but we've got an all new Avengers team. Everything's hopeless. Um, <laughs> We're, there's got to be some way to fight back these Celestials, this impossible, powerful horde. Yeah. And it's up to these fine folks to do it. Awesome read. Jason Aaron does big, bombastic stories just as well as he does, like, personal ones. Mm -hmm. So give this a, a read. Uh, Kevin says, in my opinion, Venom is the best Marvel series at the moment. Cates is killing it. Yeah, he's, he is killing it. He is... Cates is doing a lot of awesome things over at Marvel, and I, yeah. I, 
Every time for you come on, in, they kind of need a little like, bit. Thanks, man, for making Cosmic Ghost Rider, for yeah. making Venom crazy and, and awesome, and, and bringing back Marvel Knights. I can't wait to see what that's. Oh about. yeah, that's looking that's looking really cool. He can uh, he can do no wrong. So uh, it's good to see Donnie like making big waves over there. Yeah, and he's actually in Los Angeles as well. My next one is the Terrifics number seven. So oh, who's this on the cover? It's Tom Strong. It's Tom Strong. Yeah, Tom Strong is back. Uh, where was he? What happened to him? Uh, you kind of find out a little bit of that in here. Uh, also, something happened to Metamorpho in the last issue. Metamorpho is one of my favorite DC characters, so I'm really interested to see what's happening with him. Um, this is one of those books that I just kind of glossed over really quick because I really dig this one. I want to sit down and like read it all the way through because it's just fun. It is, yes, it's DC's Fantastic Four, but it's fun. It's a fun book, you know? That's why I like Super Sun so much is because it's just a genuinely fun read. And, you know, I can't always read sad, dark comics. Speaking of which... <laughs> Hit Girl, number seven, which is the third part of the four-part Canada story by Jeff Lemire and Eduardo Riso. A fantastic team-up, second only to Brian Azzarello and Eduardo Riso. Uh, I love this story. It's brutal. It's violent. It seems to be a trend with comics for me. Mm -hmm. I like to see some bloody stuff. But... Uh, Hit Girl's stuck in the Great White North, the land of Rush and Molson Ice, and she's in a cabin surrounded by guys that want to see her very, very dead. Um, definitely not an all-ages book. There's a lot of strong language, a lot of gory, gory violence, and uh, we're going to see if Mindy can fight her way out of uh, a bunch of fighting mad Canadians with almost no weapons. Strong language. Strong, strong language. A lot of, a lot of four-letter words in this one. So, um, be forewarned. Action Comics number one thousand and two. What lurks in the shadows of Metropolis? So, somebody's framing Superman for arson. Like a lot of buildings are getting caught on fire to distract Superman. For so all these other guys are just like doing little crimes while Superman's not around, being busy. Uh, but who's framing him? Ooh, that's a problem. Also, somebody that you thought was no longer in, you know, Superman's life for a while is back. And why is that? I I can't spoil it. So, but you're just like, wait, what? She, he, they, where, who? <laughs> you know, it's one of those things of just like, why are they back? Uh, so, a lot of mysteries in this. Brian Michael Bendis is setting up a very big story here. I dig it. Cool. Batman Kings of Fear number one. This is a six issue miniseries by Scott Peterson with art by the great Kelly Jones. Mm -hmm. And we're getting to see Batman take on an Arkham classic villain. Uh, the first issue is Joker. Oh. And, uh, but it's all leading to a, a, a Scarecrow storyline. So we're going to see clearly a bunch of folks from Arkham involved, but it's going to. Uh, we're going to delve into what Batman fears most in this storyline. And Kelly Jones is an awesome, awesome artist to draw a Batman versus Scarecrow storyline. Oh, yeah. He's perfect for it. And uh, we're going to see see some crazy things. The first issue is pretty fun. Very uh, uh, interesting dynamic between Joker and Batman. Batman's just not really having it. He's not <laughs> giving Joker the conversation he wants. Good stuff. Kelly Jones was actually my first Batman artist. I, like, when I started reading Batman back in the day, it was all Kelly Jones stuff. Okay, back in the Nightfall era? Yeah, because uh, before that, I was, like, mostly only Marvel, but when I was like, oh, I'll give Batman a try, Kelly Jones. All right. So he's, like, in the heart for me. Classic Batman artist. So, uh, Flash number 53. So not only is there a speed force and a slow force that is being shown in the Justice League book, there's also a strength force, nice. and it's fallen on the trickster. So, uh, how do you start a Hulk-sized trickster? <laughs> yeah, because, you know, now he, he's not just messing around with, like, toys and stuff. No, he is actually tearing up city streets and loving every moment of it. So, how is Flash supposed to fight him? You know, it gets kind of weird, uh, the solutions that are coming up. Also, there is a new Captain Cold, but he's not from now. He is from the 25th century, the same as Eobard Thawne. Oh. So, where did he come from? Well, you get a little bit more of his uh, origin in here, and a very creepy villain from the future called the Elongated Maniac. 
Ooh. non-elongated man. So really cool stuff happening in this Flash series. It's been really good for like pretty much the entire Rebirth stuff. This one, whew, whew. Flash is so fantastically comic booky. Mm -hmm. Such a good book. Great superhero flavor. Chill. Yeah. Comic. Whatever. Thing. <laughs> Object. Superhero everything. Sex Criminals Volume 5. Five Finger Discount. Um, so things are kind of uh, with Suze and John. They're not together. Suze's boyfriend is kind of eh. John's got a cool girlfriend, but she's, he's not that into her. Everyone's got problems. Nobody's happy. We've got to get these two together. Mm -hmm. So let's see if we can do that in volume five of what is my favorite current comic book coming out. I need to catch up. Yeah. We got to get them back together. I'm tired of them being broke up. It's yeah. sad. It's sad. It is sad. My next one is also by a friend of the store, Cully Hamner. This is Batman and the Signal. So if you are familiar with Batman, you know, recent stuff, there's Duke, who is now has superpowers, and he calls himself the Signal. He's kind of Batman for the daytime. You mean Dayman? Day, yes, he is kind of like the Dayman of Gotham now, where, like, you know, ah. Batman has to sleep sometimes, so Duke is the guy who takes care of business during the day. Huge story involving, like, a lot of different um, new kind of villains, maybe an allusion to the hero dial shows up just a little bit maybe you got to read to find out coley's artwork spot on they always go to him when they need like a new you know character redesign and stuff and for good reason because he's awesome the man is a master of suit design yeah everything i've seen him i mean he gave us blue beetle this is one of yeah. the best suits of the past 30 years yeah most of so cool Casper, the Friendly Ghost Classics. So I'm loving that they're uh, reprinting these classic Casper storylines. Mm -hmm. And they even look like they're basically scanned pages from the original comics. So you're getting Casper, Wendy, the Ghostly Trio, Hot Stuff, um, Spooky, uh, the Tough Little Ghost, and uh, the whole crew is there. So it's always saddens me when these books are not available for new fans to enjoy. Mm -hmm. uh, I love that they picked out some of the best from the earliest issues and made a nice little volume for it. So if you're looking for something cool for the kids or maybe just a blast from your own past or, or your parents' past or your grandparents' past, Casper, the friendly ghost. My next one is from and Legend. And I will sing you the song if you come in and ask him to. Maybe, for $2. Uh, <laughs> you gonna charge them for your Casper song? Yes. Uh, You've been in the music biz too long. Yeah, I have. <laughs> well, I just got that that dinging noise was I just got paid for the shows that I uh, did this week this past weekend. I'll sing you the Casper song for free if you ask. Duet, five dollars. Oh, Razzle, book one, The Drift. This is by Jeff Smith, legend in the field, did Bone, all this stuff. This is more of adult fare though. This is about a interdimensional art thief. Which, uh, if you haven't read this, it's really cool. It, uh, it really plays with the ideas of alternate selves. Like, did you read this ever? I did. Yeah, I did. yeah, yeah. It plays with alternate selves. But also, you know, like, yeah, I'll steal the Mona Lisa from, you know, Earth Next Door. Why not? Huge fan of Jeff Smith. I really wish they would reprint a lot of his other stuff, like Shazam and the Monstrous Society of Evil. For some reason, they're not. That's not in print right now, which was silly. But anyways, I'm really stoked that this is coming out in a nice little smaller format because the other ones were like gigantic, up to like this big. It's huge. Yeah. So awesome. Great book. Far Cry from Bone. Don't get yeah. that thinking hey, it's going to be anything like Bone. It's yeah. not. It's very. It's it's much more adult comic. So yeah, that's for you, not for the kids. Yeah. Christina ask anything Sonic, considering the movie will be coming out next year. Uh, I think Sonic came out last week. They had that switch from longtime publisher Archie. Yeah. And they sort of gradually stopped coming out with stuff. But now IDW. IDW has a license. Out and stuff. it's good stuff. It doesn't really, like, negate all the Archie stuff. They're just like, yeah, but that story's over. This is the new story. So we're carrying it. We've got Sonic. Come in and get Sonic. But I don't think there's anything new this week. Yeah. Speaking of not new, the Silver Age Legion of Superheroes. Oh man, what a beautiful trade paperback. Collecting the original Superman, or I'm sorry, uh, team of teen superheroes from the future. 
including their first appearance in Adventure Comics 247, all the earlier appearances in Adventure, and then Action, and Superboy, and a, a random issue of Superman, but beautifully reproduced, recolored, but Crazy looking fun. classic. I never cared about the Legion when I was a kid. Just too many characters, too confusing, wasn't into it, too corny. Now I'm a huge Legion of Superheroes fan. I love every era of the Legion of Superheroes. Uh, in every issue they explain who they are and what their powers are. So yeah. it's actually not that confusing. You just have to give it a chance. Super fun stuff. Um, some of my favorite Silver Age comics. And they can be yours too because they're in a nice big volume. Favorite Legion member? Oh man. Matter Eater Lad maybe? Matter Eater Lad's pretty great. I was like, so I'm a big fan of like the, the 70s stuff. So Timberwolf is pretty cool. Yeah. And Karate Kid and I don't know. Pharaoh Lad was mine. Pharaoh Lad's a good one. Yeah, Pharaoh Lad died horribly, but. Yeah, there's some real tragedies in Legion too. This yeah. is a book that like, they had some, some deaths that stuck around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And had some intensity to them, some surprises. It was like. You know, for being like the teen superheroes, some of the most adult stuff happens in those books. Yeah. So, I think this is one of, if not the best book that came out this year. Exit Stage Left, The Snaggle Post Chronicles. Gorgeous. If you liked the Flintstone series at all, pick this up. If you are into crazy hysteria, McCarthyism kind of, like, <laughs> era. Into McCarthyism. Well, I mean, you know, but, like... If that's your bag. If you're interested in, like... The, the communist witch hunts. Yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like... Or Fascinating like, history. Yeah, it, this is so good and heartbreaking and funny. Everything. And there's also, like, a lot of other characters, like Squidly Diddly's in this. <laughs> and, um... Uh, God, not El Cabong. Hubble? Quick Draw. Quick Draw McGraw, thank you so much. <laughs> I do know El Cabong, though. Uh, it's so good. And it's so great. And it really hits you. I'm buying this tomorrow, first thing tomorrow morning. It's... I can't speak enough goodness about it. It is fantastic. It's got some real depth to it. It's it's like yeah. a, it's a it's a good solid read. I didn't really give any of the plot. Um, so <laughs> Snagopus is a Southern Gothic playwright uh, who happens to be gay, and in in a time when that was not like you know cool at all. So he has the secret life, uh, and then the you know McCarthyism starting to happen, and so he has to like you know go to the stand you know in front of the uh, the House Committee on Un-American activities. activities. Yeah. Fascinating stuff. And it's so great. And, like, it also gets, like, a little hopeful towards the end. Amazing stuff. Heavens to Murgatroyd. Yeah, it is. Oh, good God. <laughs> Best book that came out this year, in my opinion. Wow. Check it out. Yeah. Exit stage left, even. The Beatles, Yellow Submarine, celebrating the 50th anniversary of the movie. Um, so this comic, or this graphic novel, is an adaptation of it, uh, uh, redrawn by Bill Morrison. Which uh, is awesome. Yeah, of From... uh, Simpsons Comics fame, yeah. Bongo Studios, yeah. and now Mad Magazine. Um, so yeah, awesome. I haven't had a chance to crack one open yet. Very excited to see it, to see this sort of like uh, uh, classic movie as a graphic novel, to see how it plays. I'm sure it'll be fun and weird and trippy. Yes. Just look at the blue meanie there, come on. I like the hand, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Cool stuff. And if you're a Beatles fan or you know a Beatles fan, this will make an awesome, awesome gift for them or yourself. Don't do acid, kids. <laughs> no, never. Or do. I don't care. Um, <laughs> my, uh, I do not deny or con <laughs> connote or anything. You don't connote? It's con I can't come up with words don't today. Don't do acid, kids. I'm, I'm really tired, guys. <laughs> uh, as usual. Brennan laughed. <laughs> thanks, Brennan. <laughs> Uh, as usual, Sidekick Special of the Week is my last one. This is Young Marvel Man Classics, Volume 1. I actually have been rereading Miracle Man, one of my favorite, or it's my favorite comic of all time. Really? Oh yeah, I love it. I'm not even that huge of an Alan Moore fan, but I just love Miracle Man. It's so, such a great treatise on superhero. Uh, but, where did all those stories come from? Where do you get the inspiration for this? The old... Miracle Man, or Marvel Man series. Yeah. yeah, and then they finally got to be reprinted when, you know, Marvel took over the rights to it. So you can actually get some pieces of history that was just gone forever. You never, ever got to read it. So usually, $34.99. $5. 
Wow. Yeah. So I'm also going to be picking this up tomorrow because I also like the history of comics and everything like that. Crazy, crazy weird comics from back then. Those are some oddball comics. Yeah. Like weird stuff happens in this and that's why I like it. Those exist because there was a fervor for in England for Captain Marvel comics. Right. But they're just they, there were no more Captain Marvel comics, so they created their own character, which is very Captain Marvel like. Very. Yeah. <laughs> very. And then you know, just basically spawned all the spinoffs, yeah. the Marvel Man and everything. Uh, Orlando says Snagglepuss sounds great. Thanks for recommending it. I'll buy it tomorrow. Yes, you should because it is fantastic. Uh, let's talk about everything coming up because we have a lot of things. So, what do you got first? Well, we're going to go play Dungeons and Dragons over at Outlaw Moon after this. We're going to do a live stream of that. And this Sweet. is the final battle for Storm King's Thunder. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be good. It's them versus the dragon. Oh, man. Big ancient blue dragon. Sweet. What's the dragon's name? Uh, Perry. It's actually Imrith. Okay. Uh, the Doom of the Desert. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's a good title. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to go through everything really quick. Uh, it's that time again. Austin Chronicles is doing Best of Austin. If you guys want to help us out, please go to the Austin Chronicles website. Give us a vote for Best Comic Shop. Give Guzu Gallery a vote for the Best Art Gallery or Toy Store. And give Outlaw Moon also a uh, vote for Best Toy Store or Game and Gaming Store. We uh, really want to win. I want to smash all of our competition with democracy. <laughs> yeah! We're going to have a second round of voting, I'm sure, too. There's a second so round of voting. We'll Everybody, there's a that. second round of voting. Also, Labor Day sales coming up. Huzzah! I'm super stoked. Jay and I actually went to Waco and filled the van up with new merch Ooh. from the warehouse that we get to uh, sell here. There's a lot of stuff that we haven't had in the stores, a lot of statues that we were out of. Now we have them again. It's an entire giant van's worth of stuff, which I am not unloading tonight because I'm very tired, but <laughs> I'm probably going to do it anyways. So uh, this is all the stuff that's going on. I'm not going to go through everything because, you know, we're running short on time. Come in, grab one of these cards. A lot of special deals. All the details of the sale. The deets. The deets. So something else that's going to be happening during the Labor Day sale, every $20 you spend, you get a ticket for the prize tent, which Come is back. It's going to be the following Saturday. We want everybody to, you know, have a week to rest. Spreading out the fun. Then Saturday, the uh, 8th, we are going to be having the tickets. Uh, or the prize tent. There's always a lot of cool stuff in there. We had a giant Starscream statue at one point. That went pretty quick. Some cool masks, comics, uh, plushes. toys, plushes, a lot of things. But that is going to be the following Saturday. Okay, so also check this out. On the same night, we're having the art show over at Guzu. This is uh, Boston Hardcore. Uh, it's uh, co-sponsored with Terrier Cult. Uh, if you're familiar with them, they love Boston Terriers. And so it's all going to be like dog-themed art, and dogs are welcome to this art show. The same night, over at Austin Books, we were doing the Staple Pre-Party. Oh, man. Yeah. So it's going to be a huge, fun time over at Austin Books and Goose. Staple Pre-Party's on a Saturday night? Uh, Friday. this is on Friday, and okay. this is on Friday, yeah. So I just found out uh, earlier this week that they were both on the same day. So okay. that's going to be a really but fun time. Not on the same day as the prize tank, because no. it's Saturday. No, that's the next day. So. Okay, yeah, so Friday night, Boston Hardcore, Staple Free Party. Correct. Saturday, Prize Tent. Yeah, so come by here, do the Prize Tent, then go to Staple. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, we're also bringing in a guest, Jin Wang. She is the writer and artist of Prince and the Dressmaker, which isn't my usual type of book, but I read it, and it was lovely. I liked it a whole lot. Yeah. So that's all my announcement. <laughs> and uh, scene. Good yeah. job. Anything else you got going on? Um, I think that's about it. Okay, cool. Well, you can follow me at Super Tight Denton 1. You can follow you at Comic Book Brandon. You can follow both of us at Austin Books, and we will see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. Come to all of our stuff. It's going to be a blast. Yeah.